Welcome to Lessons in Life and Love with Rihanna Milne, where we show you how to have the positive mindset for success in all life areas. It's time to have the life you desire and the love you deserve. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Season 3 of Lessons in Life and Love. I am your host and global life and love coach, Rihanna Milne coming to you every Friday on the Lessons in Life and Love podcast website and on my app, Lessons in Life and Love on the go. I'm all about helping you transform your life in all areas into one that you're passionate about to help you create the emotionally healthy, evolved and conscious relationship and to avoid toxic, painful ones that are too prevalent today. If at any time during the week you have a personal concern, do reach out to meet with me on my website, at rihannamilne.com. Sign up for a life and love transformation discovery session and assessment. And I look forward to meeting you and seeing how I can help you best. Okay, love angels and transformers, let's get going. Today, I have a really lovely and amazing guest, Diana Davis, who is helping making a difference around the globe with her nonprofit organization called Movies Making a Difference. Welcome to the show, Diana. Hi, Diana. Thanks so much for coming on the Lessons in Life and Love show. Thank you so much for having me, Rihanna. It's really such an honor. Uh, Well, you're welcome. Your message is extremely important, and I am all about helping people around the globe be better in life, love, and to extend their hearts and lives to others. So I think your message is extremely profound, and I'm excited for you to get into it. But before you do, I would like to tell you a little bit about this brilliant and wonderful lady. Okay, Diana started Movies Making a Difference, a nonprofit 503C Corp. Its ambition was to inspire commercial films that highlight social life and justice and plow the proceeds back into the nonprofit to benefit the victims of these issues. Diana and her team raised money for a cult church that inspired the first film and its followers that were children forced into marriage forced labor, and also starved by their churches they were a member of. They also rescued girls being held as sex slaves and others from traffickers who prey on them if they manage to escape and are alone on the streets. MMAD has provided drug and alcohol treatment programs, job training, transportation, employment, and dental care, and has the ability also to provide those with a GED. She now has a devoted and talented team, some who were the mere survivors themselves, who were ready for work as the cameras start rolling again. Cult Cartel was filmed with the actual survivors alongside Hollywood actors such as Donnie Most from Happy Days and Judd Tyler, that 70s show. All this and more was started by one beautiful lady determined to make a difference, and that's Diana Davis. Aww, thank you so <laughs> Thank much. you, Diana. I didn't get the year that you started this. What year was that? Well, I actually started it before I turned it into a nonprofit in about 2010. Okay. Kind of raise money for the movie and getting it going and then never could. So it was just a big labor of love. I got everyone to do it. Just donating their time was when the market had crashed and uh-huh. everyone had time on their hands and wanted to do something meaningful. So then in 2014, we won audience choice for best feature film at the Palm Beach International Film Festival. And that's when I decided to turn it into a nonprofit. And instead of trying to find distribution for the film, use it as a tool to raise money and then give back to all the survivors that I've met that were just amazing young people. Yeah, that's great. And what made you get into this originally back in 2010? Was this something you experienced yourself? No, actually not at all. Quite the opposite. I had just, I think, very loving giving parents that were a great example. They were very philanthropic and always were there for someone in need. But I was an actress in New York and I vividly remember of uh, going to auditions and at that time they would have people on the street corners with their signs and showing horrific pictures of what was going on with to women in the Middle East or the Philippines mm. and I'd be trying to remember my lines and was so angry and disturbed like I was probably 22 23 thinking what am I supposed to do about these these horrors going around halfway around the world when I'm just trying to go about my day and get my, um, really, it actually annoyed me. (laughs) A good 15 years later, maybe more, I am now married with children and I'm a realtor and um, I'm in Arizona taking care of my my father. Wasn't a um, fundraiser. Walked up to a gentleman who's a newscaster 
and he, I knew that he'd been on a current affair and done, you know, quite a bit of different work. And he'd just come back from winning Edward R. Murrow Award for his documentary. Mm. And so I just walked up and congratulated him. And he said, well, thank you. And he looked so dejected. He said, but, you know, unfortunately, not enough people watch documentaries and the subject matter is just so horrific that they just want to forget about it, go have a drink, and what are we going to do about it? And I said, well, what's the subject matter? And he told me it was the FLDS, the Fundamentalist Latter-day Saints, Warren Jeffs, who subsequently now is spending life in prison for marriage to underage girls and horrific mm. abuse. I said, you mean those women in their prairie dresses that are so crazy they don't mind sharing their husbands? And he said, this is what I'm talking about. He's like, yeah, they don't know, people don't know. They are slaves. Yeah. And now all of a sudden, it's not halfway around the world. It's seven hours north of where I am in Phoenix where their main headquarters are. And he's telling me that no one's paying any attention to this. And he said, if I just knew someone that could make like a commercial film and get the word out to the rest of the country, that would make all the difference. And I'm thinking, okay, my husband at the time was a writer. I still knew so many people in the film industry. I said, are you sure you don't have anyone else that can do this? So anyway, I said, I'll make that movie. And that's great. I got a library book on it and I, on filmmaking. And I really rallied everyone I knew to come on board and we made it. And that's when we won audience choice. There are other religious cults doing this to women, aren't there? It's not just- There are so many. And then I did learn that that was where the headquarters are in Colorado City on the border of Utah and Arizona. But they're actually branches and little communities all over the country from a lot around Denver, in Missouri, Arkansas. Now the headquarters has moved up to uh, South Dakota, Pringle, mm. South Dakota, Idaho, I mean, and then all through the Northwest. It's yeah. everywhere. And that's yeah. just the FLDS. They're the Kingstons, the AUB. Now it's coming out, the Jehovah's Witnesses that have been part of the abuse, of course, Scientology. But it's so widespread. Yeah, it's really, really sad. And what makes your program different than other people that might be getting involved with charity efforts? Well, I find that many are raising awareness as I'm trying to contact other agencies because we really, it's something that's so immense that we all need to work on this together. But we'll have those that raise awareness and they just go into the schools and they'll talk about uh, to, from what they know, haven't really, not having met anyone that's really been trafficked or brought up like this um, anyway, or um, make brochures or a sign to raise awareness or maybe be a filmmaker. But what happened is that once I made the film, I couldn't just turn my back on them and say, okay, there you go. I got the public. Let's see what they'll do about it. I had to stick around. And one by one, they started reaching out to me. So each one we take as an individual, we have a safe house where we get them here. I've got a call yesterday in from a young man who'd been raised as a virtual slave in child mm. labor. And we'll get him on a plane. He's in, La He's in Las Vegas get him here to our safe house in West Palm. Then I find, I interview him, find out what his needs are. And then once he gets here, really assess them. Mainly they are drug addicts. Almost every person that's been trafficked, that's one of the ways that the predators- are coping. Keep, well, or keep them so they can't right. go away. They'll go into withdrawal. Mm -hmm. so every step of the way, we get them off drugs. Then we help find them jobs, we resumes. We reach out, whatever. Then we find out what their hopes and dreams are. And we say, let's continue. And, uh, and they pretty much stay with us forever because they don't have families. So it's on an individual. It's not just a blanket program for everybody. Okay. You know, Diana, my expertise is those with childhood trauma. So yeah. do you have psychotherapists or trauma professionals helping these kids deal and rewrite the stories of their trauma in any way? We do. The biggest problem that I encounter is that they don't even know the extent of their abuse because they don't know what is considered the expectations of what a family will be like or what right. a church would be like. So once they experience kindness and love and it starts opening up, it's a whole process just for them to acknowledge it. Right. And then to get them to go back and address this again, most of them, they want to shut off and not think about it. To explain to them that they can't, it will erupt. It will come out in all different ways, how necessary it is. But Yeah, because trauma stays stored in the brain and the body cells and children or teens like this that are exposed to various types of traumas will try and suppress it and squash mm -hmm. it down. They don't want to think about it. 
yes. then it does come out in their adult love relationships or in life with high anxiety, bouts of depression, or mm -hmm. other mental illnesses. And also in business, they're sabotaging themselves in business and just yeah. can't seem to get ahead. Yeah, I was just wondering if that part of it's been addressed. Uh, what type of aid do you give the people that come in? Is there other things other than what we both have mentioned already? They, most of them have had no dental care. So we have a dentist that donates her time. She's absolutely Great. Uh, amazing in Palm Beach. And it could be getting a car fixed so they can get to work. Really, it's we take each one and every step of the way, we continue. But our next movie, we've taken some that are really in a good place and have had the therapy they need and are doing well, come back and be in this movie, A Cult Cartel, that will be premiering in West Palm in April. Hope. Tell me and the story behind that one. That is the movie Carmelita that was supposed to be the following movie, was about the sex trafficking on our southern border in Mexico that mm. American companies down south of the border turn a blind eye to for protection. And so I thought we would like, tackle another subject. But because of bringing these young people to the Palm Beach County area and having them really become our, you know, we're their family, they participate in our fundraising, I got a call from a gentleman, Jack Cook, saying, I know that there's this problem on the Mexican border that we're all aware of now. You've made us fall in love with these young people. Isn't there any way you can do a sequel to the first one, Cathedral mm -hmm. Canyon, and maybe have the kids tell their story, tell yeah. their their point of view, and maybe work on the film as well. And I said, well, Jack, that's a great idea, but we're about to start filming Carmelita. And the next day I get a phone call from one of our supporters and said, did you hear that Jack passed away? Oh. I said, I just spoke with him last night. He didn't. Well, apparently no. his last words were to me, got off the phone, went and took a nap and never woke up. Oh, wow. Thought, How sad I have is that? To make that movie. And everyone rallied the kids were so excited about it of course the film is dedicated to jack yeah it's become such an important part of these young people's lives that they were in a place where they were not even allowed to listen to the radio let alone watch a movie to think they're now part of it that's great yeah and that gives them purpose too because they're turning around and helping others by their story which yes, is a big of part of healing trauma so much so, and that they yeah. play a character. They're not in a documentary as themselves. Okay. So it's, it's therapy. You're absolutely yeah. right. One of the most amazing things is, is when we started trying to read, we realized how many of them didn't know how to read. Oh, geez. And then trying to memorize a script that they couldn't read. And so the Hollywood actors such as uh, Jude Tyler, she coached our kids and it was a wonderful experience for everybody. Oh, that's great. Today's show is brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. Just go to audibletrial.com forward slash Rihanna and browse the unmatched selection of audio programs. Download a free title and start listening today. It's that easy. Go to audibletrial.com forward slash Rihanna and get started. Why Audible? Well, Audible content includes an unmatched selection of audiobooks, original audio shows, news, comedy, and more from the leading audiobook publishers, broadcasters, and entertainers. To download your free audiobook today, just go to audibletrial.com forward slash Rihanna and enjoy your free audiobook. How do the kids find you? How do they know about you? Uh, almost all of them. It will either be from kids that are already part of us, and then they'll call and say, I've met a friend. I've got so through word of mouth. Okay. Um, but the main way they get me is through instant messenger, Facebook messenger. Huh. Because they okay. don't have telephones, but they have like old burner phones or even flip phones that they can go into a Starbucks, get internet and contact. Oh, so that's, that's like amazing. Where are they located? They're coming in from all over the country? They are now, you know, most are from these sex. That's what we're really trying to focus on because they are sort of the lost group of young people that 
people aren't aware of. You know, you see that there are prostitutes on the streets or drug addicts or homeless that are out in the open. These kids have been sheltered in remote places and are really, you know, have been um, prisoners. Yeah, so, hidden away. Hidden away. And they're very similar to uh, kids aging out of foster care. Mm -hmm. They've been through such abuse and everything covered up that they were going through. And then they age out of the system. The next thing you know, they're an adult and they've had no childhood and no skills in, on any level. Foster care, luckily, has really come into the light and now there are services, but um, no one seems to even know that this population we're dealing with even exists. Yeah. Is it possible for them to leave anyway? Are they all fenced in? Are they locked into their rooms? I mean, any possibility for escape for these kids? Well, or? Sure. Most of the, these organizations, these, they're really organized crime operating under the guise of religion, but right. they're polygamous because if you want to have child labor and you want to recruit them fast, they're smart enough not to go out and snatch other people's children. So they basically breed them like a human puppy mill. So if you do the math on it, if it's polygamous and their so-called religion is every man has to have three wives to get to heaven and five to get to the even higher previous heaven, that there's not enough women to go around for the boys. So if there's a boy who's either questioning, rebellious, they just don't like his looks or actually has more attractive looks that is catching the eye of a lot of the girls. They will be on a construction project, usually construction. They have construction companies from coast to coast. Mm. So they bring the boys, they work for nothing. They under um, bid every municipal deal. They're huge. Dollar generals are quite often built by them. McDonald's and many, many master plan communities all use these. That's how it's able to survive. But then they'll just pull out and leave whichever boys that they don't desire to continue to take with them. And then the boys are just left on the streets. So we actually have as many young men as we do the women, even though we started out thinking it was going to be yeah. women, because they don't have the children and they haven't been given these any wives yet. And they're all over. For the women, it's much harder. You're absolutely right. They are prisoners. Unless you get one that is just causing too much trouble. And they were tell her she has to go repent for her sins. And they mm. will just take a young girl and drive her out to the middle of nowhere and dump her with nothing. Oh my God. And it's that's horrible. when they have this sort of underground that they'll say, get in touch with movies, making a difference. And they'll contact us and we'll, I'll either fly there immediately, get her on a plane, get an Uber, get her to an airport and mm -hmm. get her here. Wow, that's really something. Is there any events scheduled in the near future where listeners can support this cause or any events? I'm in Palm Beach County and so are you in Palm Beach or Broward County, Florida. That's we coming up. Do. We have our annual Mardi Gras that this year is um, in Palm Beach on February 25th. And they can go to our website, moviesmakingadifference.org and click on events. And that's on February 25th. It's Mardi Gras and it's our fifth year where we celebrate the survivors. It's such a horrific subject that we really use such an uplifting time as Mardi Gras. We take turns flying in different uh, young people from around the country. And so they're there too. And our supporters get to really hear their stories and meet them and fall in love with them like we all do. We'll always have on our website lots of different events, but that's the next one coming up in February. And then, of course, the premiere will be, it'll most likely be at the AMC Movico in West Palm, which was City Place. Okay, yes. There in April. Okay, make sure you send me the details. I'll put it in the show notes for everyone yeah. to take a look at. Do you make movies about other childhood trauma incidences or situations? We haven't as of yet. There is so much trauma that encompasses I would say every type of abuse has been experienced by these young people. Yeah. And it's really because, as I mentioned, it's something that is very little light has been shed on it. I was surprised. I think this week, I think it might be on A&E, but there's the whole Jehovah's Witnesses. And, you know, for so long you think, oh, well, they're just these irritating people that might come to my door. But it's their religion. People don't even look at what can go on behind closed doors. You know, if they say, well, it's religious freedom, they can pretty much get away with doing whatever they want. Uh, you get people from with really terrible motives thinking, ah, this is a perfect place to hide. It's horrible. I mean, Palm Beach County now is all over the world with the Jeffrey Epstein case yes. and the human trafficking of young local girls and girls being snatched, boys too, unfortunately. What are some of the suggestions that you might have to 
shed more light on these everyday occurrences that are going on because people just yes. don't realize. Do you have any statistics on how many kids are put into sex slavery? I don't think there really are any good statistics. I mean, they know how many calls now are coming in to like Polaris and these uh, organizations when people see or, or even have a inkling that something might become on, you know, you see it, you tell it. But my experience just comes from so many of the girls that I described that have now been on the streets. If they don't know about us, it's perfect prey for a predator to what they call it grooming. Mm -hmm. So when, you know, people will ask me, well, are my daughters safe to send them to the mall? Chances are they are safe because as I said, these people are smart and they're smooth. They do not want to risk just snatching someone whose parents are waiting to pick them up in an hour. Yeah. So they find people like the foster kids that have aged out at 18, they have no family, or these kids that have escaped or been thrown out or runaways or anything that don't have any family ties, or they look on the internet and they find them. They're even hiring other young high school boys to mm. point out which girls at school do you think are having a hard time emotionally or looking for love from some other place. And oh, wow. That's what it is. A lot of ads saying modeling for young girls. Yes. And yeah, that's been around for ages since the exactly. 60s. Yeah, oh, that's absolutely. an old scheme. Yeah. And people keep saying to me, can you believe how prevalent this has become? And I don't, internet has made it easier for them, but I don't think it's more prevalent. I think the biggest issue, which is fantastic, is we now are aware of it. How it's bad it's become. Mm -hmm. As an actress in New York, I can't tell you how many times someone approached me to do some sort of commercial and come to some house or audition here. And mm. I was aware that there's something off about that. But if you're a girl who just ends up in New York City and has no one and no education and is from some tiny town, it's perfect prey. So the biggest thing yeah. is educating our daughters and schools, counselors, anyone, or just a neighbor realizing if there's a girl who seems to be isolating or troubled or parents that are absentee, give them some attention yeah. because they don't think it's happening to them. They, even if they hear a lecture on it, they'll say, oh, but that's not my boyfriend. My boyfriend's taking care of me, not knowing a year from now what he's going to have them be doing. Yeah. I'm so glad you're shedding light on it. I mean, every time we, we think about it and talk about it, it's still very upsetting that this is really what our world has come to. It's a very sad comment on what's happening out in the real world of our country and the world, really. It I is. mean, other cultures have had women as sex slaves for years, mm -hmm. about time. And I think it's really coming to light in the U.S. You know, and maybe with the help of the internet or television reporters that are bringing it out of the woodwork even more so. Right. Uh, you know, I just wish there would be more education for our schools, mandatory in the education, as well as stiffer sentences for people that are caught doing this. Yes, and for the oversight in our foster care system. I mean, the, such an enormous percentage of girls that, and boys that have been trafficked have come out of foster care. Mm. And so many of the kids that we are a part of our mad family, movies making a difference family, are also from foster care or no family. And what they describe as the abuse that has gone on yes. is unbelievable. So they're out at 18. If someone's kind to them and gives them a place to sleep, they're all for it. And since they've been through such abuse, the abuse they're now receiving doesn't seem all seem that as bad. horrific. When I came up with a childhood trauma checklist, the top 10 things, adoption and foster care is one of the 10. Mm -hmm. Because I worked with kids from foster care and adoption that in the hospital setting that ended up back in the hospital due to depression, suicidal ideology, uh -huh. cutting, extreme drug use, alcohol use. And it's interesting because the Kaiser Permanente, who did the ACE study, missed so many things of trauma. And they mm -hmm. did not have kids of foster care and adoption. My list did. Yeah. And I'm thinking, how could they miss this group you know, that have gone through so much trauma? But I was just firsthand working with them. So I knew of it. And it's interesting that they have changed their list a couple of times now. And I think finally, foster care is on the list of adverse childhood events. Oh, yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. I mean, the more education we can do and help getting it out there, what is childhood trauma, how it exists, why it exists, how to help heal it, 
and getting out to the world these messages. And I really commend you and your company and all the kids that are involved for your purpose work. And thank God the kids have you and they're doing the purpose work with the company. That's great. Oh, well, and also you that have recognized this for so long. And yes, I mean, childhood trauma. I met a woman um, yesterday who just went through a a terrible, actually was domestic abuse. And she said, well, how do you think this is going to affect me? I said, you're going to get through this because you're an adult and you're processing this as an adult. Not the childhood trauma. They don't process that the same. You have to go back and people don't realize that they're just growing up and they're fine and they've gotten beyond it, even though our ones that are successful. Yeah. It will continue to come out. Well, I'll tell you, the love trauma is equally damaging with the PTSD and people don't want to talk about it. It's kept again behind closed doors, especially if there's something sudden or repeated years of battering or emotional or physical abuse and they are traumatized. Yet in a oh. civilized marriage. <laughs> this was the one when I was talking about was just a boyfriend that was very short term and she just, he wasn't who she thought she'd be. And so of course she's devastated, broken hearted, take a long time to give her my number. She needs to heal because uh, people of trauma attract people of trauma. Yeah. And she attracted someone like that. Thank God she's done with him. People that have had abandonment in their life, they still would miss them. So consciously it's like, I know he's bad for me, but I want him back or I missed him, or at least he was good to me around this. And they're negating Um, some of the torture and trauma they went through. Right. Absolutely. To rationalize it. Well, at least it was some love. Well, luckily, this is a very healthy woman who was just, when I see what happened to her, I think it could happen to anyone. The guy was good. You know, she's already had a life. She has a company. She can bounce back. She has a very good supportive family. Good. It was just something that hit from left field. Now, if she had been one of the, our girls that had already experienced this trauma, that's a completely different story that it would just keep repeating. And, and that's why it's just so important yeah. for them to address that. When anyone's at the hand of a sociopath, and for our listeners, a sociopath is someone that uses another for pleasure or profit. Oh. And when I was doing the research in this in 2011, one of the books I read by Martha Stout said one in 25 people were sociopaths. Now it's six to seven in 25 are sociopathic. And they're very charming and manipulative and kids aren't of full mental, emotional capacity to really understand or know the warning signs. And adult women are often, unfortunately, taken in through manipulation. I'm all about helping those through love trauma or childhood trauma. And for the ladies listening out there, we know how damaging that is as well. Don't suffer in silence. Yes, I will yeah. definitely tell her about you. Thank That's you. wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I thank you, Diana, for visiting us today and for your beautiful and important work around the globe. I look forward to doing more things with you and being involved and in your events to my capacity that I can. That would be wonderful. What would your last words of wisdom be to our listeners? I think it's that people think it's such an enormous problem out there that what can they do? Like Mm -hmm. when I was 22, what could I do? And you can do the smallest thing, whether it be just donating $20, that adds up. If you don't have that or you see a neighbor girl, stop and talk to her and give her an attention. If every single person did one thing to show a little compassion, love, and understanding to another young person, I think it would make all the difference in the world. Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you so much. And for our listeners, have a beautiful and blessed day. Thank you. Okay, love angels and transformers. That's all we have time for today. I want to thank Diana Davis and her wonderful company, Movies Making a Difference, for shedding light on this most important topic. And I appreciate you, our listeners, by helping to share the love, by sharing this show link and telling others about this invaluable cause. Please take a moment to subscribe to the show and give it a five-star rating and leave a comment of what you liked about the show. Remember, you can get the show on your favorite podcast app or for free at LessonsInLifeAndLove.com or on my app, Lessons in Life and Love, on the go. Remember to go to my website, RihannaMilne.com, for many valuable resources. You can take the four free love tests there, get the ebook about childhood trauma, as well as get downloads of my books, Love Beyond Your Dreams, Break free of toxic relationships to have the love you deserve, the Amazon number one bestseller, and its sister book, Live Beyond Your Dreams, From Fear and Doubt to Personal Power, Purpose, and Success, two books that will empower you and are meant to go together. And as always, I am here to help you create the life that you desire 
and to have the love that you deserve. Have a very beautiful and blessed, amazing day and fabulous week. We want to thank you for joining us on this episode of Lessons in Life and Love with Coach Rihanna Milne. Go to RihannaMilne.com for more resources. If you're really ready to take action to improve your life or love situation, apply now for a session with Rihanna. And remember, it's time to have the life you desire and the love you deserve.